Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back into another episode of The Buster Show. Today, we have another very, very special guest, a legend, Jenna Bandy. Welcome to the show. <laughs> What's up, you guys? Thanks for having me, man. Of course. So we were talking right before this. The last and only time we've ever met was at this game, the uh, PBC Pro Basketball Combine, if I'm not mistaken. And you dominated it. I scored <laughs> one point on a free throw, if I'm not mistaken. Really, it? Only it was a it was a good looking free throw. It was yeah, you looked great. <laughs> you looked great, but um, but yeah, you went you went off, and that was my first uh first look into the basketball game of Jenna Bandy. But I want you to you to walk me through kind of how it all began, whether it be you know I know some of the coaching stuff you do, kind of leading in to what you do now. Yeah, I mean, play basketball all my life. Um, and softball as well, but I really fell in love with basketball. And so I took that, um, got a scholarship, played college basketball. Um, I actually have torn both my ACLs. Yeah, um, <laughs> my right what? one. I tore my right one before my senior year in high school, so I didn't play at all my senior year. Whoa. I went, I went Division two. You went from not playing in your senior year to playing college basketball. Yeah, I was pretty blessed to actually still get a scholarship to play. Sports. That's amazing. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. I mean, it was definitely one of the hard, two of the hardest things to go through. Um, so then I tore my other one, my third year in college. Um, after college, I kind of just got in my head like, oh, I shouldn't pursue overseas. Like, I've already blown out both my ACLs. There's more to life than basketball, right? Mm -hmm. I was going to do the whole sideline sports reporting thing. And I actually was helping out at the ESPYs as a runner and at the Special Olympics as just a runner, you know, like, hey, what, what kind of coffee you need? Like, I'm getting it for you, you know, but just like yeah. networking, connecting with people, you know, you know, chopping Mark. it up. And I enjoyed it. But in the process of doing that, like going on interviews, following up, I got approached from an old friend that I used to play basketball with at 24 Hour Fitness. Um, he just took over the girls program at a nearby high school and he was like, Hey, I'm looking to fill my staff. And I know you just graduated college. And I was like, I've never coached, but I mean, he's like, just come by, just come by. And I got my feet wet with coaching and I really fell in love with it. So I became the JV head coach and his varsity assistant for two years. And during that time I had posted, um, a split picture of, me hooping and on the other side me looking cute right I've and seen, i've seen that yeah and that picture took off and after that took off i posted another how did it take off i i <laughs> it just started getting reposted and then it turned into a meme and it was like first she'll break your ankles then she'll break your heart so that That's was funny. like that That's was like funny it's a good meme it, it was pretty good and like it was like that that whole like viral hashtag like get your girl who could do both got it what it was so I was like all right I'll post that and then after that I posted an all sports video so I'm um, throwing the football shooting the basketball um hitting a golf ball doing soccer like so I posted that and that took off so I just started gaining a following right so now mm -hmm. like I'm in this edgital cake. Were you trying to gain a following or no? Um, after like the split pick happened, I was just you were like, like, why not? Yeah, I, I mean, it's like, it's authentic to me, like all these sports. I'm like, let me just put a video together. Let's see. You know, it's like, it can only be one minute, you know? So it had like, yeah. there's no music in the background, has all the original like, ding, like sounds, you know, everything. <laughs> right. I wasn't really trying. I wasn't. But then it happened and I was just like, all right, I mean. I guess if I just post like videos and photos, like, you know, I, I knew that I was never going to be like super revealing or like not authentic to who I am, like trying to just, you know, get the likes, get the view. So. Of course. And the reason that it worked was because it was authentic. And I think that's the takeaway for anybody. If it's not authentic, it's not going to work. It's pretty plain and simple. Um, yeah. So that that's great that you did. <laughs> Well, it was weird because like, so that was happening and I was in, you know, the educational system as a substitute teacher and a coach at high school. So like people would start being like, 
Genevani21 on Instagram. And I'm like, no, it's Miss Bandy. Like, <laughs> you know, like as a substitute teacher, it was kind of weird. Yeah. That's so weird. Yeah. And then on. Um, How I, old were the kids? High schoolers. So freshmen through. <laughs> oh my God. Year, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And then um, I became a head coach at Calabasas High School, and then the head coach at my um, at my high school alma mater. And right around then, so that was Thousand Oaks High School. Right around then is when we we met at the PBC influencer. Yes. Game. Tying and, it all together. <laughs> and it's funny because that you say that because it's relevant to my story because that's where I met Josh. I had no I, way. I, knew I didn't know that. I knew Caleb. Caleb and I, news. yeah. And like Caleb and I connected maybe two years prior. He came to one of my basketball beauties games. We, we dated a little bit, you know, and then we still remained friends. And when I was at the game, <laughs> I, I, like, I know. And like, it's kind of funny. I mean, we we get along where there's definitely still like we still like butt heads like you know it's, it's fun. All out, all out. yeah it is it's all good and fun and um at that game i recognized caleb oh, what's up caleb how's it going and then i'm um he was like me and my buddy josh and his wife are moving to thousand oaks that's where i live i live in thousand oaks so i met josh at that game and soon they're like hitting me up to to go and uh, join them in a YouTube video at Mamba Sports Academy, which is right down the road. And I'm like, yeah, I'll come. Like, if it's basketball, like, shouldn't be too hard, whatever. Like, it's first time kind of, like, in front of the camera, you know, it was – and from then on, Josh kept asking me to come and join in his videos and Caleb as well. And Josh was just like, Jenna, like, you should really start doing YouTube. And I was like, nah. Like – I've always kind of had that feeling, even as like when people say, oh, you're an Instagram influencer, like I just hated like the connotation it came with it, you know, like, oh, you're an influencer, that like that's all you are. I'm like, it's not all I am, you know, just, <laughs> you know, but like now, like I've been in doing YouTube since for like, like posting consistently for like eight months now. Amazing. And I am so I take so much pride in it now. Like I'm I'm a content creator, I'm a YouTuber, and I have like no shame saying it. It used to be like, what do you do for a living? I'm like, I coach and I kinda like do this stuff too. <laughs> there should there shouldn't be any because you're being authentic through and through. If you weren't being, then I would understand like if there were you, but this is not the case. So and, and, and I think it's also like just um, the natural progression of things, like uh, a fun example that I've seen in the last year alone, people that were really big on TikTok last summer, it was like not cool at all. Like you right. we were lame for ha being really big on TikTok, but now it's... everyone and their mom wants to be famous on TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> but, but that's really interesting. Um, so kind of what have you seen, what have you learned uh, from a, a creator standpoint since then in the last eight months that you would go back and, and tell yourself when you're first starting out? Well, it's kind of like what we talked about with how you said it's, it's better to put something that's 75% of like your quality work out faster than it is to wait or something that's a lot better so that's something that josh told me right away he was mm -hmm. like jenna just start making videos it doesn't matter if it's perfect just start getting videos out you know and i, I was like no i want it to be right but like now like eight months down the road i totally understand it's like if you're you're following your subscribers they're gonna follow you they're gonna support you and really they love the rawness they love the authenticity mm -hmm. they you know, you mess up, like, just, just start over. You know, you don't have to cut it there. You don't have to edit it there, like, you know? So I learned that. And then also, it's, I learned that it's really cool to just be your own boss. But it's also, you know, you got to hold yourself accountable. You got to make yourself a schedule. You got to make sure, you know, people are going to show up. You got things in place. So people think, oh, you're just making videos for a living. 
ooh, it's, it's a lot. Like we'll be out in that sun, you know, for hours. And it, for my video, then we got Josh's video, and then we got Kayla's video, and we have Chris, and, and you got to keep that same energy all day. Sometimes we don't even eat, you know, and, and like, you know, you, you kind of feel bad if you're performing well in this video, but not in that video. So, you know, sometimes people butt, butt heads. So it's, it's a whole, it's a whole other feat that people don't really see. They just see the finished product, you know? I remember I did one video with, I wish you were there too, but I did one video with Josh and Caleb. Oh my goodness in thousand oaks and it was like a it was a pie video of course caleb's doing and uh and yeah it was it was funny as hell with um uh brooks with brooks bionic bionic brooks oh, oh the bionic brooks got you yeah um oh, wow, that that was funny but stuff. but to your point we were out there in some for a while yeah, man. <laughs> it's there's a lot that goes into it and that's why i respect you know, any creator that's actually going out and, you know, doing their own thing, no matter what it is. Cause I also believe that it's a lot better to start out when your content's not great than starting out with it being perfect. Because if you start out with it being perfect, then there's nowhere up to go. The standard that, yeah, you that, create that, that part already. I also, you know, think it's very, very difficult to go like super viral at the very beginning of your career on the internet. I made a LinkedIn post about this. I love LinkedIn, by the way, but <laughs> I made a LinkedIn post about this. And it's like, if you have a video that gets you 500,000 followers on the first, the first video you ever do, yeah, then, sure. then you're screwed because <laughs> you will never do that again. This is not, it's not possible. Yeah. That's such a good point. So I think for like the kids, reframing how they look at that into like you want to um you want to aspire for for longevity yeah rather than virality Ooh, that's just that's that's my two cents on that but i, like I think that. i think you do a great job in that you know as to where you you've been super consistent and then all of a sudden you go play flight and then it's like, and then it, like you already have the, like you said, the schedule and the discipline in place. That's when you want to go viral, not like at the, on the front end. Um, speaking of that, yeah, go ahead. How, so you, you and, and, and Flight, <laughs> for those that don't know, he's a great basketball YouTuber um, who <laughs> a lot of people made fun of for being really, really bad, but he started this trend for himself, which I just love because it's, it's remarkable. He, I didn't know who he was until I, I go to this local gym and there's two courts and on the other side was two hype. So Jesser, LSK, T, Zach, TDG, like all of them were playing and they actually needed me. They asked if I could run fives with them. So I was just happy to be there. And then Flight walks in, like, oh, that's Flight, that's Flight. And I'm like, I don't know who Flight is, but I'll challenge him to play one on one, you know, like, and, you know, of course, then I looked him up and I was like, oh, he's like got a really big following, you know. And I played him my, our first game a few months back. So maybe like beginning of 2020. And I beat him 15 to four, and I, I could only shoot jumpers. So he could shoot layups, threes, whatever, but I can why, only- Why is that? <laughs> because I saw, <laughs> I felt pretty confident that I would beat him. So let me give myself a handicap <laughs> and see if I could still beat him, right? And you know what? I was, I was pretty hot. Like he scored three right away. And I think that's what kind of like motivated me to like not just be all like, like frugal with how I'm playing, make it a game, you know, like he scored three right away because I think I offended him when I was like, I'm going to shoot drum shots. And he's like, that's the first time you're going to play me. The first time you're going to play me and that's what you're going to do. Mm -hmm. So he hit a three and then got a layup on me. I was like, Oh crud. Like, let me set this up. And like, you know, so yeah. what's crazy is that he has such a likability about him. Like after I beat him, 
like right away he was just like good stuff jenna like no excuses like she's the real deal i didn't know you could play like that and i think his his like following his fans they just like they love him because i even asked him i asked him he was like you know what people i feel like people have followed me and they know that where i've came from like earlier in my youtube career they know that i've had like a heart murmur so he's like for me to be able to come out here and hustle my butt off like people support that and they know that i'm not a hooper hooper so they just they root for an underdog there's something about an underdog that people love and i just think his like demeanor and you know when he does make it he gets so hyped and it's just funny and yeah. also well, people say like i was talking to cash nasty he was like the fact that he just he spends like his editing is not well done that's what he says like it's not it's just very minimal editing. Like they think yeah. that's funny too. And he does replays on certain stuff. Yeah. And I don't even know if it's really on purpose. It's just him being him and people just love it. Comes back yeah. to the authenticity point. It plays yeah. well. Really and then good. I heard this whole thing about, you know, June flight, June flight. In June, he's gonna be, he's gonna be ready. He's gonna be prepared. He's doing all this skill work. And you see him in the gym, like in San Diego and doing all this skill work. And so yeah. I was like, hey, Let's get this rematch. And he was down for it. And you you beat him. You did beat him. Spoiler alert. But Spoiler. It's okay. Um, but uh, it was close. Dude. Do <laughs> <laughs> you think he got better? He definitely got better. He, he not only stepped up his defense, um, but he has a better feel, I think, like for just his touch and – um, he's got some moves in his bag. It was kind of just like he used to just go hard right and just kind of throw it up, like just hoping, praying it's going to go in. Like he's got a little like, you know, some Rondo, some little pivot, some, wow. you know, he, yeah, he really did. And, you know, I was up, I was up seven to zero. I was up seven to zero. We took a half. Oh no. Seven to one. It was seven zero. Then he, he got seven one. He got a rebound put back. All right, we took a halftime, and that halftime. Half time in a one-on-one. -on -one. Cause it was Buster. It was hot. I man. believe you. I believe you. It was hot out there, and stamina, like, and he just came with some tenacity. And then all the people on the side are just like, "Yeah, fly FTC," you know. So then he's feeding off that energy, you know, mm -hmm. and he made a. It was so cute. I thought he named his video inspirational 1v1 rematch for Jenna Banny. Not just 1v1 rematch for Jenna Banny. Inspirational. inspirational. That's a big keyword. <laughs> yeah. Because, you know, he really did. He came all the way back and I won um, 12 to 9 because I hit a 3. It, we, we said 11 to 9. But, yeah, like he got 9 points on me, man. Wow. Yeah. I'm I'm impressed. And then he he crossed me. He got me good. Like, you know when someone like kind of dribbles out like this? You're, and then you, you go for it. it. So I went for it and he got it. And then he did it again. Wow. And I went for it. And he went around the back, like bounce. And then finished with his left. Like kind of like like he kind of went like oh, damn. You know, one of those. That's an NBA move right there. Yeah, and that, so that video went and was posted on like Overtime, House of Highlights, like, and same with my, what I call the double rubber bandy. So it was kind of cool, like that was getting reposted. Totally. Yeah. Um, speaking of, of other basketball YouTubers, who, who would you say are the top three basketball playing YouTubers? Oh that you've played against? You don't have to speak for anybody you haven't played against. Oh, I haven't played against many. I've, I, wow. YouTubers I've played against. I've played against Flight. I've played against Cash. I've played against Rice Gum in a two on two. Um, Caleb, obviously. But, uh, we didn't do like a 
like I've played with him. We haven't played like one on one. Got it. Got it. You can like, you can you can count people you've played with. Okay. Okay. Caleb and Josh and Chris. I mean, those are my guys. So like, I'm gonna They're, put them up there. Geez. You know. Yeah. Um, but like, I think fillet. Oh, he can fall. He's a hooper, hooper. <laughs> He's a, like an actual, like everybody is like a fun hooper. He's like a hooper, hooper. Yes. And then, I mean, J-Law. Oh, yeah, he's great. Mills can hoop. So my guy, Chris Staples, Kayla nash Feimster. And then, well, yeah, I mean, in all the NBA Playmaker runs, like, you know, Bone Collector will be there. Um yeah, yeah, then it's a whole nother conversation when you start yeah. getting into yeah. like the former yeah. pros. Yeah. It's tough to just like say that, you know, well, like who, who puts out the best content, who like, you know, then there's Josh who is, you know, he got brought up as a juggler, but he's doing so much basketball stuff on his channel and he's super successful doing that. He comes up with the best games. Yeah, yeah. Josh is super creative. He's great. So creative. And I, I still don't understand how one person can juggle so many items. Every time. Blows, blows my mind. And even just, just daily stuff, he'll just, you know, grab a, grab a Gatorade or whatever, just throw it and catch it on his head, just walking through the kitchen. Like you nothing. know about the time that Caleb and I missed half-court shots in front of 15,000 people? No. So what? we were... We were we were blessed with the opportunity to shoot half court shots, Knicks Lakers summer league in Vegas. And they, they bring Caleb and I, Josh is doing something with Chris. So Josh and Chris do their performance. They just like select us as like, they announced that we were playmakers, but they were, it's the same thing as fans. And we get, I think we each got three shots and we just bricked it in front of everybody i can't remember if lebron was there but it was late like it was like everybody and i'm like the biggest knicks fan in the world so this is last summer so i'm like the biggest knicks fan in the world and all my guys are right there and i'm just bricked. but one of my shots went backboard front rim backboard front rim and out i have the video it's crazy the whole crowd's like oh those aren't bricks i mean if it misses it's not a make no bricks are like you miss bad oh no some of them were i i shot one that was like over the top of the backboard i got i got excited after i missed the one off the but it was a really funny moment and uh and yeah Caleb had a close one too, but I'm sure. Okay, well, Caleb's got a sh- got a shot on him. Do you do you follow the NBA at all? Yeah. Do you have a team? Lakers. Grew up, born and raised here in Southern California. I've always loved Kobe, even when he was number eight. I felt he was a little cocky when he was number eight, you know. And then 24 came around. Seemed like he had a little bit more composure to him. I've always, like, that was my idol growing up in this league that I play in, the Basketball Beauties League. They play, they call me the White Mamba, you know, and I mean, I even, it's really cool. I mean, I even got the chance to meet Kobe and um, he even said, like, so I found out that he was following me on Instagram. I didn't even know. I didn't even know he's following me. And good thing I was already following him. Can you imagine if he like went to my page and it said like follow back? <laughs> That'd be terrible. Yeah. Or uh, so I actually got the chance to meet him and he was telling me how like his daughter, Gigi, like loves my stuff, my trick shots, all the stuff I've been doing, the football and the basket. He's like, um, he's like, I had to we- meet the white mamba. He's like, you're a hell of an athlete. I was just like, yo, bro, you're the legend here, not me. Like, you're That's just making amazing. me feel so good, you know? Um, but, yeah, Kobe forever is my favorite basketball player. Lakers, and still the Lakers. I mean, LeBron, got to love LeBron, AD, Danny Green, Caruso. It's a, it's a great team. I, they're my pick to go all the way if the bubble ends up happening. 
Yeah, you think it's gonna? I mean, they're planning. My honest opinion. Yeah. Sixty forty. I don't think it's gonna happen. I think that they're like right now. The spike that's going on is insane, yeah. and it's there. It's not like it's happening somewhere else. Like it's happening right there in Florida. Um, so something tells me that it's they're gonna take the safe route. But regardless, what I thought they should have done was you know just make it bigger and have family there and close it off way earlier than what they're doing Mm. and then if family wants to leave they can leave but they can't come back but to not allow somebody to their family like this is insane oh that's extra that's too much especially like and then you look at it from like other people's perspective too like like these broadcasters who don't or like the reporters or like the media people, they don't like, they don't go on road trips. They're not getting paid millions of dollars either, you know, and they're being asked to spend four months, you know, wow. away from family. It's pretty I, crazy. Not a lot of people think of like, you know, the behind the scene people. But I think that's all part of the equation that makes the NBA possible, you know, and it makes this kind of bubble idea possible. I want to ask, I have a couple more questions, but if you could play anybody in the world, who, who would it be and why? doesn't have to be a YouTuber. It can be a celebrity, an NBA player, a politician. You can play anybody one-on-one. Oh, my gosh. I might want to take on LeBron. That would be a great video. <laughs> It'd be great. I mean, I mean, I don't even know if I'd want to play him one on one, but just to have him in a video, just chop it up with him. Maybe we could do some trick shots. I think it'd be funny to get them out of their like normal mm-hmm. shots and do some trick shots. I think that'd be really cool. I mean, LeBron is my favorite player in the league right now. He definitely is. So I would love that. Yeah, that would that would be super cool. Um, for some for some of the aspiring young female influencers out there mm. what would what would your best advice be to them as they as they start their careers best advice i would say is like i said a little earlier is be authentic to yourself don't try to be anybody else don't try to you know do stuff for views or the clout you know i've always tried to remain in a somewhat like conservative sense where I'm not revealing too much, you know, but it's still tasteful, Mm -hmm. you know? So I I would just say like, you know, be true to who you are, um, find out what your niche is and just go with it. You know, like I've kind of struggled with, well, I can't play basketball on my channel forever. Right. So I need to like sprinkle in, you know, maybe I do like a cooking video or a, uh, a, some little game, like board game thing, you know, and I, or a vlog here, or vlog there. And I've, I've thought about that, but I haven't done it yet because, mm-hmm. and I, and it's kind of crazy because I, I am a little bit like, well, you know, my, my following they've already seen so much about like basketball that's what they like you know that's what's been going really well for me but I know that I need to prepare myself for that for the long for the future so you know think ahead think ahead for the future prepare yourself um and don't be afraid to take risks so you know you want to give people what they want what they expect you know but then also you know kind of throw in those throw in those like risky videos and I you know I'm 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 lying I I have thrown in those in there like I've had a whole just long talk about the whole Kobe and Gigi thing and I didn't do anything active so I did that I've done a whole like you know drinking a gross drink thing so I've sprinkled in some stuff but I need to do more of that so I would just say don't be afraid to take risks be authentic to yourself and you know have confidence through it all um there's gonna be times where you doubt yourself or you feel like what am I doing you Mm -hmm. know um, or even you know like your parents or whatever like when I told my folks hey like I'm not pursuing my teaching credential anymore 
you know, that's what I was going to do. I was going to be a teacher and a coach, but it was, it was tough being in the educational world, like I said, and also being such a popular social media face. Yeah. It doesn't really come with that. Yeah. Um, you know, and I really saw things taking off for me on social media. So I went with it. So I'm like, Hey, I'm going to be a YouTuber now. So there's going to be doubts coming in, but you know, ultimately you have to feel right with yourself and it's your life, you know? So sometimes people aren't going to really fully understand now. Now my parents, they're hopping in videos with me, you know, they're asking me like, um, what's your thumbnail going to be, you know, just little, you know, they're involved now. They believe in it now, but so there's going to be setbacks, but just don't stay the course, you know, stay focused. It's going to be all good. It's going to be good. That's great advice. And I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing your cooking videos. <laughs> Anybody that doesn't like them say, screw them. <laughs> They'll like it. Well, people love my mom. I had a whole trick shot horse video. Mom. So I think I'm, I'm going to have to do that. That's a great idea. Yeah. I'll have to brainstorm some names, but in the meantime, where can, uh, where can people find you best? They can find me best on Instagram. I love Instagram. So Jenna Bandy 21 on Instagram. And then my YouTube channel is just Jenna Bandy. I have a Twitter, but I don't really, you know, mess with it that much, but TikTok as well. TikTok is a lot of my like reposted stuff from like YouTube videos and stuff like that. But TikTok strategy. <laughs> yeah, man, I just cut it up, you know, put it on there. Slap videos on there. It does not matter. <laughs> oh, you could do silliest stuff and it might go. It's so true. And you could put in tons of effort and it won't. It's yeah. like, that's why it's almost worth just chopping stuff up for people out there thinking about that. Um, but you're awesome. Thank you for coming on. I appreciate it. Um, that's it. See you guys. Appreciate it. Bye.